Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. It's great to have you back joining me once again. Well today something completely new and completely different. So I think I'm at the cutting edge here. I'm one of the first people to, uh, to show you what I'm, we're about to see. But before we do that, I just wanted to um, draw your mind back for those of you that have been following the channel and our subscribers. Uh, just casting your mind back a, a week or so ago when we were looking at some of these winged up wings World War I uh, aircraft. There was one, the, uh, the Roland C2, which I was particularly amused by and thought was excellent. Um, but there's one thing I forgot to show you because I actually missed it when I was looking through the sprues. I'm going to show you a photograph of what it is. It is, you may remember some of you, I'll zoom you in for this. You may remember that I was talking about some of the little pigeon boxes and there was a toy teddy bear, would you believe? And I just wanted to actually show it you up from the sprue shot. That is the toy teddy bear that is included in the kit. They even did that brilliantly, a little teddy. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and it also had this thing that was the anemometer that looked like a fish and, and various other items. So I just just wanted to uh, to show that because I thought that it was kind of missing. And when I realised afterwards, I thought, oh, how did I miss that? And there we go, it's easily done, of course. You know, when you're talking away and uh, you're not really concentrating uh, on every single piece, uh, and it's quite hard to see as well, as well as relate to the camera. Anyway, enough of that. So uh, I don't think there's going to be any teddy bears in today's uh, offering. But we're about to do a quick review on a kit, which is literally, as you can see, it's just arrived and I have not opened it yet. All I've done is remove some of the private, you know, address details and things. So I haven't uh, undone this at all. It's completely new to me. It's from a manufacturer that some of you will never have heard of. Uh, others will know them. Uh, it's a company, actually, um, you may have noticed, actually, on the, if you look at the writing on the side, it seems to be strange foreign writing to an English speaker, anyway. And yet, somehow, something about it reminds me of, you know, Homer's Iliad and uh, I think it's from, come from a country that's famous for myths and legends and, and uh, great historical significance uh, and uh, the dawn of civilization, you might almost say. Yes, because this has actually come from the land of Greece, the land of legends, the land of myths, Homer's Iliad, you know, Troy, Jason and the Argonauts, all that stuff. So, very interesting. Now, you're probably thinking Greece, a model from Greece. Can't think of anybody from Greece. So let's have a closer look. I'll, uh, I'll zoom you in a bit and we'll have a little nosy. Company in question is a company that some of you who've done World War I will recognise, those of you that like the Wingnut Wings will know this. Gas Patch Models from Athens. Aye, from Piraeus. Now, these guys are well known for their uh, resin uh, aftermarket items and what they're really sort of most famous for uh, until now is basically these beautiful little detailed resin guns that you can get for World War I aircraft like the Spandau machine guns or the German aircraft, excuse me, or the uh, Lewis guns and the Vickers guns on the British aircraft and the French and Americans etc. So these guys are a bit of a specialist, resin, very fine detail manufacturer, and they have produced something a little bit special. So let's get digging into it, if I can figure out what the best way to do that is. So bear with me, and make sure you zoom out for this. Okay. Be careful, don't damage anything. It's not that well protected, if I'm honest. And it has come from Greece Special Delivery. So, uh, I have to say the service from Greece was fantastic. I mean, I ordered this on, today's Friday, and I ordered this on, I think, Monday? Tuesday, Tuesday, I think. So it's come in four days, which is absolutely astonishing for the EU, and it's the fastest delivery, relatively speaking, I've probably ever had from there. Uh, it wasn't that expensive, I think it was about £9, the uh, shipping. Uh, yeah, a bit on the heavy side, but not for the speed. Not for the speed. So are you ready? Get ready for something really exciting and completely new. You probably haven't seen before. It is, look, it is the Messerschmitt 163B Comet in 148 scale. Let's have a look at this. This is amazing. It's a brand new model just on the market in the last seven to ten days. And we're gonna, you're gonna see it first. It has got a little bit of a dink in it. It has had a little bash on the corner, but it seems to be quite a, a sturdy box, in fairness. 
I think the mistake they made there was they haven't put it in an outer box. It's just sort of bubble wrapped and looks like a box, but it wasn't. <laughs> Basically, uh, like fluted bubble wrapped card. But anyway, it's still in relatively in one piece. So let's have a look. So on the side, we've got a whole load of options. So I say it's 48 scale and it's product code number. Does it have a number in fact? I don't think they've given it one. Looks like it doesn't have a number. Oh yes, it has 20-48236. There it is. Got it? And then in terms of variants, look at this. We have got uh, a lot of these are from Brandish, or Brandis, I should say, in Germany, which is where the uh, Jagerswader 400 were. So we've got the Jagerswader 400, yes indeed, Brandish in April 45. We've got the Jagerswader 400 1945, didn't say which month. Uh, we've got the same guys, uh, different different uh, squadron, I think, but still the Jagger Swatter 400 brand is February 45, and then we've got the EJG 2, Jagger Swatter 2, Spring 45, the German Air Ministry, no, that's the Italian Air Ministry, isn't it? Air Ministry, I think that's Italy or France, and then the British, of course, the post war captured one, sorry, post war captured one, which of course was famously tested by Eric Winkle Brown, who is the, uh, the claimed to be, was mentioned Eric Winkle Brown, claimed to be the world's most experienced test pilot. And he, he flew something like 800 different types of aircraft, a huge number, absolutely astonishing. He died about three, four years ago, very sadly. And uh, but he lived a long life and he, he tried, I think he was the first person to land a mosquito on an aircraft carrier. He did a lot of firsts, a remarkable man, Scottish. Um, anyway, let's have a look at this model because you're all dying to see what it's like. I obviously haven't seen it before, but let's crack into it. Uh, oh, I got a slightly dished box underneath because they haven't protected it enough. A historical brief underneath. So, I'm sure a lot of us know this already, but let's have a quick look anyway. So what have we got? It's saying uh, it was not only the first rocket powered fighter, but the first rocket propelled aircraft that did, to be deployed in combat units and saw action in the world came from a solution of a fast fighter that could be deployed near strategic targets and therefore intercept Allied bomber swarms over Germany. Uh, and it's going to go to the whole history here, which a lot of you who have seen my, uh, seen my channel will know from my talk about it on the, the Meng version. Of course, the problem with this aircraft is the, is the fuel, uh, which is uh, hydrogen peroxide and uh, forget the second element, they have to mix them together. Uh, and they were, as soon as they mix, they explode basically in a huge chemical reaction. So um, it's, it's like a control explosion, and that's how the rocket works. But managing this fuel was really difficult, uh, and they were prone to, um, you know, they had to sort of put one fuel in, and they had a different team for each fuel. So a team of men would come in, two guys, put fuel in, then they'd close the, the cap and douse it all off with water and then they'd go away, wait for five minutes, another team would come in to do the second element, put that fuel in and then again wash it down with water and then close off the cap. Now if anything went wrong, and it did sometimes, and there was a spillage and the two met, there could be an explosion. Some of these exploded when they were being refueled, some of them exploded just when they were about to take off for no apparent reason, probably a crack in the tank or, or a leak. Um, or some pre-ignition had, had occurred, so they were very, very dangerous. And I talked about it when I recently did my talk about books. Uh, I was talking about Mano Ziegler, the famous uh, pilot, he, he was a test pilot and also a combat pilot. And he was saying about how dangerous they were. And they were more dangerous to the test pilots and the combat pilots than they were to any Allied bomber because, you know, their encounters with Allied bombers were so brief and fleeting. They, they got a few shots in, but they couldn't sit behind an Allied bomber and shoot at it. It, it just whooshed by. <coughs> enormous speed, in fact the product tells us here actually, does it give us a speed figure? It mentions about the MK108 um, 30mm cannons which uh, were a very uh, powerful armament. Many accidents, oh, it says here, many accidents happened during refueling, landing was also dangerous due to lack of a landing system. Central skid was used, if the landing was successful the aircraft didn't blew, blew up due to fuel leak, it had to wait in the open until special Schutz Schlepper Tractor Recovery Vehicle, yes I think I pronounced it right, uh, would come and collect it. Uh, the pilot remained strapped in the cockpit the whole time, but made him easy prey for lurking Allied fighters. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it says the speed was over, well over 300 kilometres an hour, I think it was more than that, I think that's wrong, it might have 
140, 115 kilometres. That's a, I think that's going to be 300 miles an hour. Um, anyway, let's get into the other ones. We know about the history of the 163, unless we're rolling the number of rock. Oh, there we go. Right then. So this is a world first, isn't it? Well, it's only a first one. Let's have a look, zoom in a bit. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's actually quite a small kit in a very big box, okay. I hope it's alright, because it's been uh, bashed about a bit from Greece, I expect. Okay. What have we got? Got some nice, we've got some nice photo apps. Oh, it looks all very good. The box is actually okay. It's, um, it's a bit on the big side, isn't it? Uh, anyway, it's, it seems to have held it together for the journey. I'll move it down there. So, gas patch models. Here we go. Let's start with... I will start with the decal. So let's go, let's go there. Now remember, it's 48 scale. I'm going to bring you right in for this. Oh, this does look really good. This looks amazing, actually. Right, so we've got photo etch. Uh, you've got some of the uh, spar reinforcements on the spar for the wing. You've got belts here for the pilot. You've got the flaps. What else have we got? I think those are the possibly the pedals. Don't recognise every component, but uh, some very fine photo etch. You see the gas patch logo there? Yeah. Gas patch's logo is this um, uh, it's a, a parrot. Here it is. That's a Greek parrot, there we go. And they've actually got, oh, they've got some other models coming out. They've got a Samson World War I plane, an Otsu Japanese biplane, another Samson A2, Super Detail 148s. They've also got a, sorry, zoomed in too much, a Herschel, two Henschel, sorry, two Henschels, I should say, not Herschel, Henschel HS123, three different versions. So they seem to be doing sort of Fixing on an aircraft and then perhaps super detailing it and doing very various variants seems to be what they're into. Anyway, back to the sorry, jumping around here. Let's get back to this. So we've got some uh, we've got some decals here. Oh yeah, the decals are cartographed. It says so down here. Don't think you'll see that on the camera. Don't think it'll quite pick that up. It's, it's definitely says made by cartograph, printed by cartograph. They're going to be beautiful. We've got some uh, <laughs> cleverly. Uh, conceived uh, German swastikas. So the swastika, obviously in a lot of countries that's, that's illegal for whatever reason, whether you agree with it or not, I don't know. Um, I think we should know about it. I don't know why they want to cover up the history in the past, but I won't bang on about that. But anyway, the, the great thing is these guys at Gas Patch in Greece have thought of a clever solution where you can create one without it actually appearing as a swastika when somebody looks at it like now. So nobody's going to be offended by that. Then we've got quite a lot of Sorry, quite a lot of stencils here. Um, and I'm doing it, I've just realised they're actually it's a resealable bag, so I can take this out and look at it properly. So, why don't I stop messing about? Get on with There we go. I think you'll like this bit better now. You're going to see it properly. Let's just have them out on the desk. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> I'm not at my best. Not at my best today. Please forgive me, I've just had my Covid vaccination, so I may be on the verge of falling ill or something with side effects, <laughs> side effects from the jab. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd better shoot this video quick before I become ill. <laughs> right, okay, well, we did see the uh, the photo edge clearly, didn't we already? So, And we've also seen those uh, the swastikas. Oh, there's also canopy masks, that's cool, look at this. Now yeah, these guys seem to have thought of everything, don't they? Yeah, so... I don't know if that's going to come out well on the camera or not. Certainly, uh, yeah, we've got canopy masks. That's very, very nice, all included. We've also got something I hadn't realised. We've got some resin. I'm struggling with the current glasses to see what on earth it is. It's that small. Let me have another go. I'll show you here. Is it the cannons or is it part of the seat belts? I'm not entirely sure. But it's very, very fine. Come on, camera. Wakey, wakey. Mmm. Some lovely photo etch. Anyway, let's get to a couple of these decals. And I mentioned uh, cartograph. You can sit well. Again, it's so small printed you may not actually see. It says printed by cartograph at the bottom. Four gas patch models. 
and of course Cartograph in Italy are probably the best manufacturer of of decals in the world I think that most people would agree and these are lovely so you've got your prototype for the RAF one that Eric Winkle Brown was testing when he uh, flew the Comet uh, in 45-46 and you've got all these um, and again you've got some they've thought everything through they've got some white I don't know if that's picking up on the camera or not there white uh, swastikas again in the same thing they're not a swastika you make them into one by the way you position them so they've thought that out very well and then we've got these you know, is, that, is this my eyes is it the French or is this the uh, Italian Air Force well we'll find out in a second but they're really really nice I mean the quality of those and the fineness of some of the print it looks like it's all real German yeah yeah load here lift here it's all in German it's beautiful look at and you've got the uh, traditional classic squadron markings as well those are superb I'm very impressed so far the rest of it's as good as this we could be onto a winner I'll just put those away and let us zoom back so we can have a proper look at the instructions now then I need to change back to my proper glasses <coughs> let's see what I'm doing there we are now Messerschmitt ME163B gives you colour references and the RLM code uh, it doesn't tell you I don't think unless they've got a chart what the alternative paint colours would be on the inside here we go really nice uh, layout showing all the things we've just seen the masks etc oh there's a 3D printed resin jig in here somewhere yeah. oh yeah Where's that one? Oh yes! Oh, this is something special. 3D printed resin part here. And then it shows all the uh, the sprue trees. So, and I like the way they've laid out this. This is like, it's very like wing not wings, isn't it? You're probably not going to have the sort of photographs, you know, uh, the, the sort of historical photos. But the actual instructions are very like wing not wings. Very, very big clear, colour coordinated, showing you the colours here of the seat for example. When you build the seat and you put the belts in you can clearly see what colours it's supposed to be. Shows the layout in like a cartoon coloured form and then shows the actual like a photographic version of it. I mean that's amazing. This looks really good uh, and we've got yeah photo etch going in resin parts, photo etch going in for the seats uh, seat belt I should say and you've got, yeah you've got some PE uh, straps for the uh, the rudder pedals then you're building up your little monocoque interior cockpit and putting that together with the bulkhead that you've already built and again photographic version here of the actual um, inter internals of the actual cockpit and it looks brilliant when you see it. it shows the leather so you can even get an idea what leather colour it should look like very helpful then you've got your internal fuselage components assembly you've got little trim wheels some of the uh, sort of bracing struts at the side interior of the fuselage looks like an oxygen pump because of course this thing climbed up to sort of 30 40,000 feet and they sometimes had to use oxygen when they're flying it then we've got a guide again um, having done that they now show you the colours so they show you the colours and uh, what, what it should look like just like Wing Nut Wings did separately from the construction they don't try and do it all in one go they actually let you build it and then say this is what it should look like that's incredible then we've got building the instrument panel I think we've got decals yeah some decals for that and PE so it's a little bit like the Ming one that I built a year or so ago two years ago then we've got the ammunition compartment assembly. Remove seam lines, it says. Okay. And then you've got brass. Oh, you paint the brass, the bullets. Now this is interesting because this, I think, is where we have. Yes, indeed. We've got some parts here that are using resin. I think some resin parts for the bullets. 
And then we've got the landing skid. And again, this is one for, remember this is only 48 scale, so it's, it's very detailed. Really, really uh, exquisite, you know, detail with the rivets on. It's all there. Then you're building up your fuselage halves, I'll just send you back to this. Fuselage halves coming together. Showing you how it should look before you try and connect them up. Again, showing you what the colours should be, RLM 66. Showing you how the landing skid fits. Now, I don't know if you can, if the landing skid is actually fixed in place. Uh, if it's extended or it's retracted, okay, it doesn't actually retract and extend, but you can have either, which is what you'd expect. Then you basically bring those two halves together, and then we got it mentions to remove the seam lines here and there, but where it's going to be obvious. Okay, so on the flat areas basically. Then you're building up your machine guns. So you get a machine gun and your uh, MK 108 30 millimeter cannons, and so those these parts I've alluded to, which are here. I'm going to show these because they are they keep popping up. I'll show these first. So what we have here is the resin parts. And this is the, the magazine feed for the machine guns. And they're in resin. They look fantastic, I've got to say. That's just amazing. And this is 3D printed resin. So that is, yeah, something else. So here we go. <coughs> See me back out again. Building up those two cannons. And then shows you the, how the spars fit in and how the cannons fit in relation to the spar just at the wing route of course and it, again it's the detail three-dimensional detail of these instructions this is these are the best instructions since wing up wings I am in no doubt about this whatsoever yes I mean air fixes are good but this kind of relegates them down a place uh, to third I think this has got that element of showing you what it should look like after you've assembled it and then what colors you should apply which is missing in something like air fix then we've got some more little PE parts, control levers going in here for the control surfaces. Uh, which, which is not in the MENG kit at 30 second scale, so that's again, it's very impressive for a 48th smaller scale kit. And then we've got the glass going in, and it says use the canopy masks obviously to you know mask off your glass. And you've got panels that can be closed or open for the uh, T stuff and C stuff fueling panel. Looks like we've got movable options on the ailerons and the flaps. And it has a secondary, like a landing flap as well, like the Phantom does under the wing on the ME163 Comet. Landing flap extended, this is the PE one. And again, tells you which colour to put it in here. Look at the detail, yeah? I mean, somebody has spent a lot of time producing this, this instruction book, I've got to say. It's like wing nuts, but without the historical photos, which is a shame actually, because if they'd, if they'd have done that as well, then we'd have a, a wing nut rival here. This is fantastic. Then we've got the tail wheel assembly, retracted or extended, and how it should look in terms of colours. And then we've got the main gear dolly arrangement, of course, which drops away on takeoff once it's reached the end of the runway. How it should be fitted, and then what it looks like. And then you've got your flap uh, gun bay access panels open or closed. A little bit of PE goes at the back for the uh, the tail exhaust ring. Then you've got, look at this, this is brilliant, look at the detail. You've got your armoured glass assembly in front of the pilot. Uh, it's like a double, it's like a double thickness armour plated, oh, sorry, armoured glass. That how it goes in, and then the gun sight in front of it. Uh, you've even got the compass lock. Oh my god, that's amazing. This is really, this might be the most impressive kit I've seen this year, apart from wing nuts, obviously. I think you know, they're in a good league of their own, but this is this is a close second from what I'm seeing. If it's as good as this, uh, I mean, look, this looks like the brochure for a 30 second scale kit, really, doesn't it? Uh, or instructions, I have to call them brochure. See, I'm doing it again, I'm calling it a brochure. But again, it's like the wing nuts. It makes me think of it as a brochure rather than. Instructions. I probably wouldn't throw these in the bin when I finish the kit. I'd keep it, you know. And you got your final bits going on, like your canopy um, and your various uh, antennas and pito heads and things uh, that go on on the wings. 
me show that Peter had going on. I didn't notice. Oh yes, yeah, so Peter. Well, I would leave that till the end if I were you. <laughs> I think they're putting that on a little bit early. Put that on later if I were you. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> and then we've got the colours and all these different variants. So you've got the Yaris Fada 400 at Brand Brandish. Uh, it doesn't say who the pilots are, which is a shame. I'm sure if you do the research, you'll probably find out that my friend Marno Ziegler's in one of these, because he was definitely based at Brandis. Was he in 14? He might have been in 14. It's one of these, I'm sure of it. Anyway, you can see the subtle different schemes that they have with the mottling. Some of them have got the simple green and brown. Some of them have got more mottling on the top. Especially good in the winter time, I suppose. Uh, you know, snow in the background. And then it goes, tells you where to put all your various uh, decals and stencils, obviously, as you can see. Same again here, another one. This is the EGG Jagger's Father 2, isn't it? Uh, slightly different variation again. And, and this is the Air Ministry. So this is Air Ministry. But whose Air Ministry is that? Is that... It looks like it's it looks like Italian air ministry to me. I think this is Italy. I'm sure it's an Italian roundel. Perhaps you experts will let me know. And then finally on the back you've got the uh, Eric Winkle Brown test aircraft that was used. And based on his research and knowledge of flying this aircraft and testing it, of course we had we very soon afterwards came up with the Supermarine Swift and the Swallow and planes like that and the de Havilland. I've forgotten the, name, the number, you know the one I mean, the one that's got like a swallow, it's got the swept wing. Uh, and these were all, you know, based on technology learned, learned from studying this aircraft. So, okay, that's just the instructions. But I have to say, apart from winged wings, that we were, uh, number one, that's a close number two, isn't it? It just needs, it's a shame that they couldn't have put more like photos and perhaps a bit more detail about who the pilots were and things like that. Um, but that instruction booklet is the best new uh, kit instructions I've seen bar none okay uh, obviously wing that's not being new <coughs> let me just um, pop that back in there for you try to get it safely in so anything gets damaged we don't get any of these sticking to everything there we go like that but you know that is so multimedia you've got resin you've got photo etch you've got masks premium decals where they've gone to the best supplies available it bodes well doesn't it it's a good sign now let's get into the plastic let's get into the plastic am i going to open this i think i am i think so by the way this retails for about uh what did i pay for this about 39 40 pounds i think it was plus postage so it's not dead cheap but it's not expensive either think about you know I know it's a different type of thing, but Tamiya have come out with the 48 scale Phantom, uh, Phantom B, and it's 100 quid. So I know this is not as big an aircraft, but even so, it's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable. So let's start, let's bring you in properly for this and let you judge for yourselves. In fact, you bear with me one moment. I'm going to get some more lights on for you. And we're going to have a little bit more light. Is that enough? That might be enough, actually. Right, now then, the wings. Now bear in mind this is 48 scale, so I'll put my thumb at the side for scale, okay? Now they are very, very nicely moulded. Uh, there's no flash at all. There's great detail there. In fact, I'm going to bring in my trusty bottle of water and let you, let you have a look at this in a bit more detail. And I am going to bring you in a light, a bit of extra light. Stick that there. There we go. Pop that there. Now then, bear with me a moment and I'll light you up a bit more. Some good lights on there. I think you'll be able to 
see. So, <clears throat> you can see we've got, um, obviously it has, uh, on this aircraft it has, it has flaps and it also has uh, leading edge slats. Let me just get my counter for that. There we go. Leading edge slats on the wing. Obviously this is where the cannon uh, access hatch is. Uh, so this is the underside of the wing here and this is where the flap, landing flap goes. They're absolutely exquisite aren't they? I can't believe my eyes actually. This is absolutely brilliant. And the, uh, the plastic feels quite nice as well. It feels a bit like Tamiya actually, if I'm honest. It's got that nice sort of firmness to it. Yeah, it's not, not particularly soft, it's kind of medium in terms of its uh, its grade. I like it. But, you know, look at the little details here. Look at the access hatches and uh, on the top of the wing here, you can see there's uh, access hatches. Lots and lots of detail there. So that's the main wing. That is absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look at the next one, what we got here. This time it's all the wheels, etc. I can bring you out. So we've got wheels and tyres. We've got the skid, which is here. I'm going to bring you nice and close for this. Here we go. It seems to work best if I do it like this. There we go. So we've got the skid underneath here. The lower, um, lower bodywork just behind the skid there. Uh, we've got uh, the dolly wheels. Well, the wheel actually the wheels, sorry, <laughs> wheels are there, and these are the tyres, obviously. But again, lovely detail there. Absolutely brilliant. And there's a, there's an exquisiteness to the moulding here. There really is. Then we've got this is part of the uh, skid assembly, the top part of it, and then this is the dolly. Uh, axle here. Got your rear uh, tail wheel and tyres there. And here we've got the actual tail wheel uh, sort of, uh, assembly itself and the fairing, which you either have retracted or extended. And it just looks, you know, various control surfaces here um, controls and uh, some of the actual uh, uh, rigging, etc., the suspension. That is very nice. I mean, that's an understatement. This is a, this is only 48 scale, and this I'm going to be blunt. To me, it looks like it's on a different level to what we've seen. Well, we're not. I'll tell you something. This is going to become the, the go-to ME163 at 148 scale. Who else does one? Is it Hasegawa? Do one? Uh, I don't think Ravel did one, did they? Now this is clear parts. Um, they're not the most perfect in terms of distortion. I don't know if you can see this. There's a, there's a little distortion in that canopy, but you've got to remember it's quite hard to mould this bubble car bubble canopy. Never easy when there's such a, you know several different dimensions to it. Uh, a true three-dimensional shape, you know. But it's good. I don't think the yeah, it's not perfect. It's not quite Tamiya on the clarity. You can almost see there are different. So I can get this to come on the camera. Look very carefully at the bubble canopy. Can you see that there are like almost streaks of different uh, moulding quality through it? It's not quite perfect. It's very clear though, and it's very bright. Um, just a little bit of. Uh, distortion. Here's a good idea, there's something they've thought out, this is very clever. So this is the main, this is the main bulkhead that is behind the, uh, the pilot and what they've done is made it clear so that you, it's easier to mask rather than trying to insert these little tiny windows just behind where my little finger is. There's two little tiny windows either side at the top there. Now they're a nightmare to get in and they're a nightmare, I can tell you from the Meng uh, 30 second scale kit. Very hard to get those right. Really difficult. So they've gone, they've stepped around that problem by making it all clear and then you just mask off that and spray it all grey. Bingo, you've got perfect window. You've got the beautiful little 
um, and it's all one piece that made it a thick um, bulletproof uh, glass shield there which is, that works really well uh, on the main because it was a bigger scale that had to be in two pieces and then you've got your side windows here which we'll just turn the other way I think there we go the side windows which again lovely and clear and very nicely moulded uh, and obviously don't suffer from the distortion quite as badly be, because you know as I said when we're looking at the bubble canopy you're asking it the plastic to do a lot and you've got to have moulds that are basically 100% perfect to have no distortion I'd let them off on that I think that um, it's not a deal breaker uh, I think when you make the model if you have it open you know you probably won't pay any attention to it really anyway uh, and even if it's closed I don't think it's it's not so bad that it would put me off yeah it's not as good as others I've seen it's not as good as Tamiya um, but that's the first part of the kit that hasn't really been absolutely perfect so let's have a look at the other two more spruce to go um, I've got to be honest with you I don't think I've ever looked forward to the kit as much as I have this and I only heard about it a week ago so it's a real joy to see something completely new from a new manufacturer not known for this sort of work. I think these are going to sell like hotcakes. And I'll tell you something now, I'm going to be giving this a good rating and I'm going to be telling you to go out and buy it at the end. But let's have a look at some more of the parts. So let's get close in on the, the fuselage. Because here we've got, again, superb figuring and moulding of this. Look at the detail they've got. They've got plenty of internal detail on the inner in a wall of the uh, the wing root, absolutely gorgeous. You've got to have a rudder that you can pose, obviously. You've got your little teensy weensy propeller, which of course is the uh, is for the generator. It's not a propeller to drive the aircraft. It's jet powered. Uh, it's a little generator that goes on the front of the plane and drives on the electrical system. Then you've got your nose, which looks really nice. Just, again, lots of panel detail, rivet detail, it's all there. Then you've got your little hatches and you can either have them as one piece or you can have them actually put in, uh, I think you put them in separately, access hatches where the, the fuel goes, the T-stuff and C-stuff. Uh, you've got your jet pipe at the end and then you've got your ailerons and your flaps. And here, in one piece, is your rudder. Here. Um, and there's just some uh, inner workings in there on the wing, some of the wing spar, uh, reinforced wing spar elements there. I mean that's just beautiful. Uh, this little scale, well, as I said, you can tell this is going to become the go-to kit. Uh, I actually predict that uh, this model is probably going to just kill off. It, in real terms, sorry, I just realised that you're leaning over. <laughs> this is going to kill off the, uh, the the competition at this scale because I don't think anybody's going to build anything. Well, well, there is nothing else on the market that comes close to this. Now, if you want a nice Messerschmitt 163 Comet, then this is the one for you. Here we go. Now then, last one. So this is all the cockpit detail and all the guns and instrumentation. This is going to be brilliant. Look at this. Now then, we've got a detailed cockpit tub here. Complete with the reinforcing straps that you see. Then you've got, uh, this is the top, uh, internal top of uh, the gun bay, I think it is. Then you've got the gun feed. Uh, belts for either side going into the cannons here and of course this is where you put your little cannon uh, your little bullets go on top which are here look at those the bullets <sighs> look how fine they are those are better molded than the 132 ones were on the main that was the one thing on that kit that rather let it down I thought the molding quality was a little bit poor and it's a part that you need to be very very crisp those are beautiful <sighs> then we've got instrument instrumentation the pilot and we've got various bits of trim wheel uh, we've got various taps and lugs uh, we've got the inner braces for the wing root there part of the spar we've got the seat pilot seat here the, the bit sits in in the back seat rest backrest 
And then we've got the MK108 cannons that go in the wing route. Absolutely fantastic. That's the bottom of them and that's the, the top casing, flip up casing cover. And interestingly we've got, because I think there's two versions I mentioned, one's the machine gun, the 20mm machine gun, and one's the MK108 cannons. So if you look very carefully you can see we've got machine gun bullets here as well. These are not the ones I've just shown you. They're at the other end of the sprue. Look. That end of the sprue. So these are the 20mm machine gun bullets, alternative guns. So you've got a choice of guns. And and then there's all sorts of look at the fine work here, the wire the piping and some of the electrical instrumentation and wiring looms and things that have been included. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, right, well. Anything else I should note to tell you about? You've got pito heads, you got control surfaces. I think this is the uh, control rods for the uh, ailerons. Just so fine! 48 scales, it's incredible! I just don't know what to say really. Um, as I said, one week ago I'd never even heard of this. I uh, heard about it last weekend and then thought I would just jump in and buy it. And I saw it was quite sensibly priced. And they weren't trying to rob you on the shipping. Uh, and I just say to Gas Patch Models, thank you for the great service. You can order direct from them, which is what I did. So, you know, you don't need to go through a local distributor. Um, I think it was 11 euros for the shipping uh, and it was kind of priority tracked shipping. It's arrived here in four days. I mean, it's just incredible. It's the, some of the best service I've ever had. I struggle to get that from the UK at the moment. So the service is very good. You can get this model from Gas Patch Direct. I think that this is the most impressive new model that I've seen for a long time. And I'm, I'm not going to put it on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of the other models like that, but I'll give you a, a, an instant response to where I think it sits. It's a 9.5 out of 10 and would have been 10 apart from the, as I mentioned, the, the only criticism is that clarity is a little bit distortion on the canopy. Uh, but it's clear, it's just a little bit of distortion when you move it around. You can see that it's, uh, perhaps that's something that they haven't quite perfected, but the, the other screws are just gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. At its scale, at that price, you feel like you're handling something that's 80 or 90 pounds worth, you know. I mean, you've only got to look at the instructions. I mean, they're a joy just to open these and to see the way they've thought it through and the lovely colours and the detail and the way they've, they've embellished it and they've help, they're helping you to build it, you know. It's a thing of beauty, this. Uh, it's come out of nowhere, you know, no warning, just appeared from a company that are really known for their, for their resin machine guns for World War One aircraft. So. Well, there we go, I hope you found that interesting. Um, in summary, my view is this. Go and buy it. You're going to buy this, you won't be disappointed. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, just tell them, please put it in a strong outer box, because I don't think they're doing that, and I've got a few batches. It's not, it's not damaged the kit, but it'd just be nice, because it's a lovely box, actually, as well. It's got quite, quite nice artwork. So let's just uh, zoom it in again, just have a last quick look at this. So it's nine and a half out of ten, no question. What can I say? Go buy it. Go buy it. Um, something different. New manufacturer and they look like they've got it absolutely spot on first time, don't they? So there you go. That's the Gas Patch Models ME163B Comet from Greece. Absolutely gorgeous. You know, I'm not being churlish saying about the clear, clear part because I want to give it 10 out of 10. It's that close. Maybe 9.7 out of 10 would be fairer. It's it's fun. For a first attempt, that is fabulous. Absolutely blows you away. Hope you enjoyed the video. Anyway, I hope you give me 10 out of 10 or at least 9.7. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. Um, as I said, I definitely recommend that kit to you. Uh, you should rush out and get yourself one of those because I think that having that in your stash, you, you'll go through it and you go, wow, mm, mm. just gives you a feel-good factor straight away that a lot of kits are missing, you know. 
people like Meng with some of their kits like <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I mean the 163 is actually a nice kit but of course they did this um, Fokker triplane which has been a bit of a mess to be honest and uh, not something for them to be proud of uh, and their first attempt at that sort of kit and not a good one actually it's, it's not a bad kit but for what it was costing you know it was quite expensive this is quite good value I think it's reasonable especially uh, coming direct from Greece I think I paid 46 pounds for all in thereabouts or maybe 48 but I think that's great value uh, a wonderful kit recommend it to you very strongly brilliant uh, we, we, if we could just get more manufacturers to come forward and use stuff like this and of course we have got some others coming forward we've got border models they've got this uh, ME163B uh, ME109 I mean Schmidt 109 uh, G6 coming through at 135th scale that's going to be very interesting a bit, a bit unusual but it's reputed to be very beautiful as well and not that expensive. We shall see. Thank you for joining me very much. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and you get to see all this new stuff when I, as and when I get it. Uh, and if you are a subscriber, don't forget to ding the notification bell because when you do that, you'll get early, early warning about forthcoming new videos. It just remains for me to stay Please all stay well, stay safe. I mentioned I've just had my jab. Uh, I'm going to go off and start feeling ill now, probably. So <laughs> you know, drink lots of lots of the water and stay hydrated and keep my fingers crossed. Hope you all stay safe and well. And until next time, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves, and bye for now.